Hello everyone, my name is Nguyen Trần Hân Ngân. I am a sophomore at Saigon University, majoring in English Linguistic. This video is about my first field trip, exploring the southwest of Vietnam. The trip lasted for 5 days and we got to travel to many cities. Châu Đốc, Hà Tiên, Kiên Giang and Cần Thơ. I hope that you enjoy watching my vlog and please don't forget to comment down below because that would mean a lot to me and thank you bye for now just just for now though it is currently 3:30 in the morning uh i didn't have a lot of sleep because my head was full of thoughts about the upcoming trip so yeah I will be going to school in about like 30 minutes so I'm really excited now let's go shall we on our first day of the trip we visited Bajusu Su Temple as our first tourist attraction Bajusu Su Temple or in English the holy mother of the Ram Temple is located at the foot of Sam Mountain Châu Đốc City An Giang Province Looking from the outside, Bajusu Temple is the same as a blooming lotus with three roof floors stacked over each other. The campus of Bajusu Temple is quite large, enough for millions of tourists coming to visit it every year. Many pilgrims believe that this temple brings luck in business for a better promotion. The holy mothers discarded garments are cut into little bits and contained in a small red envelope. These are considered lucky charms to keep the possessor in good health and drive away evil spirits. However, it is only effective if you handle it with care. For our next destination, we went to see Jasu Kajibut Forest, which was just about 10 km away from the Cambodia border. Jasu Forest is an ecosystem of catchable trees and home to a large variety of birds and other species of flora. There are a lot of activities to do and many aesthetic places for picture-taking lovers. You can hire a small wooden rowing boat, which is enough space for four people, and take a stroll in the lily pads around the Jasu Bird Sanctuary with a variety of birds like cormorants, watercocks, and many more. The rowers are all very friendly and knowledgeable about this area as they have been working here for many years. So don't be shy to ask any questions relating to the forest. You can also witness and walk on Vietnam's longest bamboo bridge, added recently by Chao Đốc Tourism Authority. The record was set on January 15, 2020. Don't forget to try some local specialties in small huts at the center of the forest and do try the top note coconut milk tea because it was really good in my opinion. This place is a real hidden gem in Vietnam. After having rested at a hotel in Hà Tiên City, we began our next trip to Phu Quoc by high speed boat. A special thanks to Zhao Huế for braiding my hair because it was such a windy day. That was also my first time on a boat and I wasn't feeling that great on it to be honest. Mostly because the amount of coffee I accidentally drank was too much while having breakfast that day. But I didn't beat so lucky me. Our first tourist attraction in Phu Quoc was Khai Hoan traditional fish sauce barrel house. In Vietnam, fish sauce is called nước mắm. Khai Hoang fish sauce has been around for more than 40 years and the recipe is passed through three generations. Their fish sauce is made by combining anchovies and sea salt. Then it is fermented through various stages for 12 to 15 months in these wooden barrels. Finally, it is drained and packaged for people usage. There is a shop at the end of the facility where you can buy Khai Hoang fish sauce for a pretty reasonable price. They also have a taste test store in there to help you choose the perfect kind of Khai Hoang fish sauce depending on your taste preferences. Moving on to my most anticipated place on this trip, it is Grand World, the sleepless city in Phu Quoc. 
The quintessence of Vietnam in this area should be on your list of must-see activities. It is known as the most modern real-life performance in Vietnam and it is a recreation of Vietnam in the past with unique culture and bold national identity. This is one of many mini-shows in a day that I was lucky to stumble upon. This place is also considered to be one of the best imitations of the river in Venice City, Italy. You will have a chance to sit on the gondolas which take you along the river to watch the romantic scenery created by a lot of sophisticated and colorful buildings. Going further down, there is also a beach. The sunset back then was really beautiful and vibrant. And at exactly 9.30 p.m., there will be a musical water fountain show which lasts for 30 minutes. For a better view, you just stay in one of the cafe near the lake of love. Don't make the same mistake as me because this is my point of view on the bridge. Not that great quality. On the third day, Ngoc Hien Pearl Farm is our next destination. On arrival, we were guided by a young lady in Ao Yai, which is our national garment. She told us about the history of pearl fishing on Phu Quoc and how pearls were produced. There will be an opportunity to get a free pearl, so you should listen carefully. Then, we were taken to a very impressive showroom of every type of pearl jewelry imaginable, all of which are gorgeous and have intricate designs. We were then moved to Thanh Long Rose Myrtle Garden. Rose Myrtle is a plant grown for its abundant flowers and sweet edible fruit. The fruit can be made into many healthy products. In this place, the fruit are used to produce wine, jellies, chocolate, and syrup. You can also taste the wine and syrup at this store. We were still in college, so they gave us a lighter wine. Next was Dao Ngoc Honey, where we got to learn about different types of bees and ways to identify them. I was also given a chance to hold a honeycomb. You can also buy natural honey products, but I recommend you try the honey drizzled ice cream and honey coffee. We had to wait for a really long time to be able to enjoy it on our bus, but it was worth the wait. Later, we got to visit Ho Wuk Pagoda, also known as Chuk Lam Ho Wuk. This is the most tranquil Buddhist temple on Phu Wuk Island and in the Mekong Delta. The pagoda is situated along the coast of South Beach. That's why the panoramic sea view can be seen after having walked on 70 steps leading to the temple. Tourists can offer incense and pray under the giant Buddha statue inside. This is a wishing tree that is situated right in front of the main temple and you will also catch a glimpse of many trees that are planted by some of the most important people in Vietnam. And at noon, we were at a beach to relax after a long day having gone and done many activities. It was sunny but windy at the same time so it wasn't that hot. I didn't like being wet so I avoided going into the water. We played many games to compete with the other team. <laughs> I remembered yelling my lungs out to support my friends because I was too competitive. It was also the best day ever because I got to know many people from that day on. Goodbye for work and now we were heading to Gong Thơ. After having arrived at Ninh Kiều Riverside Hotel at noon, we had some time to relax and then prepared for the gala dinner right next to where we were staying. We played some small games and then it was time for the main event of the day. Two special performances from each bus. Every act was unique and special in their own way. There was also a day I will never forget because great memories were made there. 
We are now almost at the end of the trip. At 5 a.m. in the morning, we had to wake up really early to go to Kairang Floating Market, which was about 15 minutes away from our hotel. The most distinctive feature of the floating market is probably the tall bamboo pole called Gaibao. They use it to hang all kinds of goods that they sell to invite buyers more easily. You can see how people make sweet noodles with green bean paste as the filling in this area. They were really kind as to slow down the process for us to film. This is the coconut candy area. You can taste many samples of candies that they sell here. I really enjoy the coconut candy with a little bits of peanuts and coconut meat. So I bought a bag, but I finished them all in 4 days after this trip. My parents really like it too, so if you were to visit that place, you should buy more than one bag as it is really addicting. After having eaten a buffet at the hotel, which was really delicious, probably the best breakfast I've had so far on the trip, we moved to our last destination, which was the Temple of the Home Kings, where we pay tribute to our own ancestors. As our dear Bakho used to say, the Home Kings had the merit to build the country. We have to work together to protect it. The main temple is the central symbol, the place of origin of the nation, with a distinct design of a bronze drum block with 18 bowls surrounding it, representing the 18 Home Kings. There are also 54 pillars symbolizing 54 ethnic groups in Vietnam. And you may also feel very familiar with our uniform, right? Yes, it is also the same Ao Yai that you have seen at the Ngoc Hing Pro Farm. Such a coincidence that our uniform matched, right? Then it was time for us to go back to Ho Chi Minh City. And that is the end of my first field trip. I really appreciate our school for giving us an opportunity to go to that many places and also giving us many unforgettable memories with our friends. I got to try a lot of new food, learned a little bit more about my own history and also the people living there. This is not just a journey to the Malcolm Delta. This is an experience of a lifetime. Thank you so much for watching my vlog. See you in the next future. Bye-bye.